Hello and welcome again to all of you. Uh, this is the fourth webinar of mine and it has always been a pleasure to host such webinars and the last three sessions were great. I hope they were of some value to you all. Um, today we'll be talking about job opportunities for international students in the United States of America. I'm sure each one of us, including me, have at least thought once before deciding to study abroad that I should go and have a career in the United States of America. So the reason is quite evident and that is what we'll discuss in this webinar that why United States of America is of great interest to all of you and um, what are the job opportunities available there for international students. Um, to begin with, I'm Juhi Jani and I take care of international marketing and outreach at the Zoom Abroad. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are conducting a lot of webinars. We are a London-based education, recruitment and career consultancy. And we are here to help you. We are here to guide you, assist you if you want to pursue your study and if you want to build your career abroad. So stay tuned and we'll be coming up with a lot of new and exciting things. Um, register on our website and uh, there are a lot more things which can be of great interest. So let's just begin with the topic, the United States of America. Now, if we see the last year's figure, U.S. still tops the chart for having the maximum number of international students. So talking about numbers, approximately 2 million students traveled to the U.S. to pursue their dreams and having their career there. So um, it is a huge number. So why these many students, they go there and study? So U.S. has always been the strongest economy for past so many years. And um, it has been an economic super giant. And um, it has the world's largest nominal GDP. And the U.S. GDP is, so the U.S. economy is around 25% of the world's gross domestic product. So this is itself is a huge thing. Also, the country has the most advanced technology and infrastructure. Um, it has the abundance of natural resources. Uh, <clears throat> so that itself makes the country very rich and uh, uh, with a lot of opportunities. And um, also the quality of education. If we see, there are so many education institutes um, which offer a great quality of education and most of them are ranked in the top uh, institutes of the world. So that interests a lot of international students and uh, US is still, it's called as the land of opportunity. So the reason is quite clear so that most of the students would want to go there and study. In spite of having the most difficult visa process in the world, because this country has, um, first the visa process is very confusing because there are a lot many types of visas. And also um, the norms are quite stringent. So if you have attended the webinar of my colleague, where, uh, Tanu Parikh, where she discussed about um, the US visa process, you must have understood that um, you know what all types of visas uh, are available but today we'll be only talking about the student visa which is called as f1 uh, visa so uh, most of the international students in the us they have a f1 uh, visa status which is us non immigrant student and uh, so while you're studying in US, um, and if you have an F1 student visa, you are normally allowed to work, but there are a couple of uh, restrictions which you have to, uh, uh, rules and restrictions which you have to abide to. So while you're working, the nominal working hours are around 20 hours per week, and um, during break or vacations, you can work 40 hours during week, which is a full-time employment. However, uh, I have to categorize the type of employment into two parts, which is on campus and off campus. Now talking about on campus, this is the most freely available opportunity for a student uh, if you're studying in the United States of America. And this type of employment normally doesn't require any prior authorization from the governing body. 
Now, um, there is a governing body uh, which is called as USCIS, which is United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. Um, keep that in mind, students. Whatever you do, whatever type of employment you want to go for, USCIS is something which you have to always approach for in terms of authorization or prior information. You have to be in touch with this body. But in terms of on campus, you don't really have to go and uh, get authorization from USCIS. You can go and work, uh, provided if the work opportunity is available in the campus, provided the college allows you to work on campus. But there is one limitation with on campus is that not, not you know, there are not many varieties of jobs available. There are just few limited options are available and which might not be related to your field of study. So that is a one limitation which you can see uh, while working on campus. And um, yeah, that's about it. But off campus, if we talk about, there are a couple of job opportunities which are available and that is a um, you know, very interesting thing for international students. They normally look for these options. So the first type of uh, off campus job opportunity is called as CPT. Now CPT is called as curricular practical training. Now, curricular practical training is defined as a type of internship or uh, work, any other form of work, study, or any other form of practical knowledge, which you can go um, outside and work for an employer. Now, this employer has already have an agreement with your school um, to offer such kind of practical trainings to students. But the good part here is that your CPT is, can be a paid employment. So for you, you can earn while you are on a training. So this is something, uh, a, a good thing for you. Now CPT can also be uh, done while you are studying or uh, once you are done with your study. It depends uh, what type of course are you taking because the first eligibility for CPT is that your course must have that kind of requirement of outside training or an internship um, and also if not then that particular internship should give you some academic credit for that so that is um, uh, the first requ requirement for cpt another requirement for cpt is that you need to have a prior authorization from your international student office based in your university and also a notification to be sent to the uscis which is United States um, Citizenship and Immigration Services. That authorization is very, very important. You need to have an employment letter before in hand. So you need to have a job in hand before even you apply for the authorization. And once you get the authorization, you are only allowed to work for that particular employer and only with the limited number of hours which are mentioned in the authorization letter so basically authorization letter will tell you what uh, how many hours you can work who is your employer and uh, where is the employment based so you can't really deviate from these uh, uh, topics so you have to work so make sure you um, opt for that particular uh, internship or training which is very close to your uh, major field of study and um, which can really help you later when you go for actual employment. So CPT is one form of off-campus employment. The other form of off-campus employment is called as OPT, which is optional practical training. Now, optional practical training is something which is of great interest to international students. This is a kind of a post-study work for students who are studying in US. Now, OPT is... Um, Again, you can go for OPT while you're studying or when once you're done with the studies. But you have to, um, you can only apply for OPT once you are there in a particular course for at least nine months. And um, you don't need to have a prior appointment letter. You don't need to have any employer, but you need to apply um, it after uh, you have finished uh, around nine months in a course. Again, you need to apply through USCIS and you need to inform your international student office. Um, they will in turn send you a EAD, which is called as employment authorization document. Now for OPT, 
EAD is the most important document because unless you don't have an EAD in hand, you cannot work in uh, once you're done with your studies or even while you're studying. You need to have an EAD document well in hand. So my tip for you guys is start early. Once you are you have finished the required amount of time in that particular course, do apply for OPT because with OPT, once you have that the letter you can work anywhere in the US because that doesn't specify a particular place or a particular employer but the employment has to be in the field of the study so that is one norm which is important and normally USCIS they normally take 90 days to revert back so please up start applying early for OPT now um, again uh, important thing regarding OPT is that it's a it's a 12 month um, OPT training program which you get um, for every kind of degree you do for example if you have done a bachelor's degree you will get a 12 months OPT followed by a master's degree you will again get another 12 months of OPT so um, um, there are different OPTs for different degrees so keep that keep also that in mind because that can be a beneficial thing for you also people from stem background which is science technology engineering and mathematics opt can be extended for another 24 months for you guys if you want to stay in the us so um, basically um, 12 months is the regular time for opt but for stem background people you can have in total the opt of 36 months which is close to three years so uh, a huge thing for you do keep that in mind and um, if you have taken one catch is there here if you have taken a 12 month cpt full-time cpt then you're not allowed for a 12 months opt so do uh, plan it accordingly keep that in mind work smartly that if you don't need that full-time cpt internship training keep that for a part-time and then go for opt full-time because then that will help you to uh, have the future employment in place so that is the uh, second type of off campus now the third type of off campus is called as the economic hardships now this is something a rare type of uh, uh, employment so students of uh, if uh, from their resident country if any unforeseen circumstances has occurred in the country uh, for example war or if the currency has fallen down a lot uh, and a student is unable to sustain himself um, during the course of study then uh, a special approval is given from USCIS where he can go off campus and work to sustain himself during his stay in the United States of America so that is one important thing um, to be kept in mind the last type of off-campus employment available is called as employment with the international organizations now um, so this is not any CPT or OPT. This is basically uh, employment. If you get an employment letter from any organization who is listed in the state department list, for example, organizations like Red Cross, uh, African and Asian Development Banks, um, WHO, World Health Organization, World Trade Organizations, and any like like these many small organizations are also there if you have a employment or an internship letter they also issue a sponsorship letter if you have them uh, with you again you have to apply through the uscis they will send you a employment authorization document and then you can start working there so start applying early because they will again take 90 days to send you a EAD so plan your uh, things accordingly if you if you think you can your field of study can be of great importance to any of these international organizations this is a great way for you to pursue your uh, work in the United States so there's a this opportunity not many students know about it and um, if you know it it's better uh, to plan way ahead in uh, in advance and you can uh, work uh, for that so these are the types of employments which are available in the United States now coming to the jobs okay so as I said that <clears throat> US is um, a super giant it's an economic super giant and it has been the strongest economies from past so many years 
And that is the reason it is the home for so many global organizations. You named the organization that has been uh, started in the US and made in USA is itself a huge brand. So um, talking about the major sectors which are there in the United States of America, um, the biggest sector which um, is a part of the country's economy is aerospace and defense. So Boeing is one company which I'm sure you all are aware of is a American organization. Then consumer goods. So <clears throat> let me tell you, um, you, the United States of America is the biggest importer and exporter of consumer goods and petroleum. So consumer goods is a huge industry in the United States. So companies like Walmart, Procter & Gamble, they are uh, American origin companies. Electronics, so talking about Google, General Electronics, Microsoft, Apple, IBM, they all are American origin companies. Food processing is a big uh, sector in, in the US. Healthcare again, so companies like Pfizer, are US based companies, motor vehicles, so uh, Ford Motors, General Motors, they all are American brands and they are huge as a uh, global organization. And as I said, petroleum is again, it's a big thing in, in, in the US. Also, apart from these sector, this country has the most advanced media sectors in the world. So US film, TV, music has the global audience. And this, com this uh, country has also thousands of newspapers, radio channels, and lot, lots of news channels. So people from media industries, um, they have a huge uh, job opportunities available in the US also. Again, small and so these were the companies, these are, I spoke about these all are multinational companies, but small and medium sized enterprises, they are also quite prominent in digital and technology sector. So uh, for example, Silicon Valley, which is in California, it's the home for hundreds and thousands of startups. And um, if you have a dream to build your career and see yourself growing along with the startup, I think um, Silicon Valley is your place or any small and medium sized enterprises or an a startup can be a great place for you to start and begin your career. And they are also very much uh, keen in taking the new talents, uh, diverse talents, people from different parts of the world. They do hire a lot of international students also. So there lies a lot of scope for you people to go and explore and uh, if we talk about the shortage of employment so as per the bureau of labor statistics in the united states um, there is always a shortage of healthcare staff so uh, so professionals like nurses uh, nursing assistants healthcare assistants medical uh, secretaries um, you know these type of uh, uh, jobs are always in short of so they always require uh, people in this particular um, department. Also, um, there is a shortage of staff um, for people who are like accountants, software developers, um, customer service representatives, and also mechanics, uh, police officers. Again, they are also one of, uh, they are in the list of shortage of staff. So um, not just uh, the employment is there with the bigger organizations, but also in the smaller sector, medium sized sectors, the employment opportunities are available but one thing i want to tell you that yes us is the land of opportunities but the competition is extremely fierce that you have to sell your skills to the employer you have to bring it on table what is the unique thing which you can offer and you have to be well prepared with the situation. So to conclude my whole uh, webinar today, I have uh, you know, listed down four important tips for you guys to remember it and so that you can plan way ahead before even you come to the US and start your particular course. So my first tip for you all will be to start early. So what do I mean by start early? When I was mentioning about all the off-campus employment, they all said that 
being an international student it's very important for you guys to plan way ahead because the approvals take time because you need to decide what type of employment is best suitable for you and which will bring you more results in your future employment so always uh, start planning also um, even before you choose a particular type of university also look for universities who offer work study programs so not all universities in the united states offer a work study program so if you are into a university which is a work study program then the, your cpt which is your curricular practical training go hand in hand so it gives you a lot of um, experience in in the cv and also you can uh, you know sustain yourself financially while you're studying so um, planning and i said having a process always helps you always makes you a step uh, ahead from from the league so always start planning um, way ahead in advance second most important tip for you guys is research your situation what do i mean by research your situation competition is fears in, in America, the job opportunities are there, but the applicants for that particular jobs are so many. So you need to know what is the thing which you can do? Uh, where are the job opportunities available? Research the cities, like for example, cities like Texas, California, um, they are the cities which are more friendly towards international students. So start looking for schools there, start looking for companies who, um, who are more welcoming towards international students. So that is one thing uh, which you have to do. And if you do that, that will make you more confident once you apply for jobs because you know where you stand, you know what are your skills, what you know where, what are you bringing on the table. So the second important tip is research your situation. The third important tip is network. I have time and again stressed upon the fact that networking is of great importance uh, for students. 70% uh, of jobs, they are, um, you know, they get cracked through networking. And the job market is like an iceberg. So whatever is on the top, what you see is just the jobs which are published, but whatever is beneath the surface is the 70% of the iceberg. This is the job market you don't see, and this is where you get, um, access to the job market through networking so make full use of your international student office in your university keep in touch with your professors um, faculty members do socialize attend events volunteer for events if if you have time and also attend the career fairs so you the more people you meet the more network you have and the more audience you have um, so that helps you a lot and it will definitely um, help you to land into where you where you want to be in life and the fourth important tip is that you have to stay positive and you have to be quite persistent let me tell you job hunting can be very exhausting and at times disappointing not only in us but in general it is it is a very exhausting process and you might feel that you know your efforts are not uh, bringing in the results but the thing is that be persistent do the right thing and follow these process step by step process and by doing that i'm sure you'll land up to a place where you always wanted to be which will make you happy so this brings uh, to the end of my webinar today i hope um, the session was informative. I tried to uh, concise the information as much as I could. Um, if you have any questions um, now, please let me know. I'll try and answer it. And if not, I can always address them offline. And um, it was a pleasure hosting the webinar for you all. And uh, uh, we have a couple of time. If you have any questions, do let me know. Okay, so I don't think we have any questions for now. No worries. Um, even if you come up with any questions, you can send, you can email it to me later. My email ID is juhi.jani at the rate zoomabroad.com. And um, 
as I always say, uh, you can connect with us on our social media platform. Join our Facebook page. It is Zoom Abroad. And uh, please register on our website. It is www.zoomabroad.com. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of things for students uh, which are helpful for them in terms of deciding their future study options, in terms of you know, uh, deciding their financials because I I know uh, deciding um, the financial is the biggest thing and it's the first thing which comes to your mind when you think of going abroad and study. So do visit our website and uh, stay in touch. I will see you next week uh, and we'll be talking about job opportunities from the other part of the world, which is Australia and New Zealand. And uh, if you, as I said, if you have any other uh, thing which you want me to cover, um, please get in touch. I will uh, do that in the upcoming webinars. So uh, I'll take a leave. It was a wonderful time hosting the webinar again. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.